the M1 Mac Mini base model from Apple. It's $6.99 and is available in different configurations. Today we're unboxing and getting initial impressions in real life situations, summarizing the use of a few days of use. From the basics to media dabbling, like hardware, design, software, video editing, and Geekbench scores. Explain later. Thanks again for all the support getting me past now 1,100 subscribers so far. Celebrating with a giveaway soon. Give this a like if it helps and subscribe for more. Let's open it. Just like how I remembered my 2012. So it just says Mac Mini in the front and back. So no pull tab this time. Paperwork. So I got the base model for Mac Mini. It's got that highly anticipated M1 chip, eight gigabytes of unified memory, which means it's now together with the chip, and 256 gigabyte solid state drive storage, which is now base standard for Apple. Before we get into the software stuff, let's check out the practicality of the hardware. Where Apple literally cuts corners for us to get that affordable price. We have to start with that new first generation Apple Silicon chip the M1 processor. First of its kind and already changing the game. No longer an Intel chip, you get way better customized performance for your Mac. This leads to faster than ever speeds because all parts are made for each other and are closer than ever to move in unison. Apple can also have better control of when they release their new models like they do with their iPhones for example. One thing that stands out from all the other M1 computers right now is all the ports you get in the back. This means less adapters, which save you more money and hassle, especially when you already have a mouse and keyboard, a visually cleaner solution for minimal look. You can also charge your phone with it because it has USB ports to match the cord that most of us iPhone users already have. Another thing is it supports two displays for a better workflow. If you count Sidecar, that's three. I'm using the HDMI port to connect this smaller monitor and a USB-C port plus adapter to connect my Apple monitor from 2010. The USB 3 ports are connected to my USB 3 hub that connects to my external SSD. Don't worry if that's confusing, it's basically a more flexible solution than the other ports on the Air and the Pro. The two USB ports now include USB 4 support inside of it. The far left port is to plug it into the wall since there's no battery, because it is a desktop. Last thing is the speakers. Not good at all as expected. That's why I have a display that provides that sound for me. Check out the differences here. All that was so loops. Everyone's one size big. This is what makes it feel like a different watch. As for its form, still useful in its light, compact size. It's so simple, it's perfect because it easily fits into any setup. Even though it's not a grab and go laptop, it can still be useful between offices. Like I used to work between two offices in different states and my old 2012 Mac mini with the same small form was able to fit in my little bag. So I just plugged it into the other office's peripherals. With the same chip as the other M1 MacBook Air and Pro, it's so close in performance. Big Sur works great in this M1 computer. You can download a wide variety of iPhone and iPad apps, even though it's not verified for Mac OS, but not all of them. Like I couldn't find Yahoo or Amazon, but I found Amazon Fresh. We'll do a startup test now. Ready, three, two, one, play. I did two startup tests from when I press the power button to the login screen. Let's see if the light is on. The first was 18 seconds and the second was 22 seconds the next day. Shutting it down took 15 seconds. There it is. For some reason, this is my default monitor, the one with HDMI. I'm gonna go ahead and log in timer on this and three two one click
off. As expected from any new computer, basic operations are snappy. I downloaded the Geekbench app and it immediately offered to download Rosetta 2, which is a tool that automatically adjusts the app to work with the M1 chip. As the developers who make the apps catch up, we should have an even better experience per app. To have decent Wi-Fi and web browsing with Safari was as fast as my other devices. I'm sure when I get a Wi-Fi 6 router, that would be more noticeable. With lots of Apple's new products on the latest software, you can now play 4K videos on YouTube. For me, this played 4K videos almost right away, but still pretty fast. I'm still exploring the latest software, but loving it so far. I plan to go more in depth in future videos, so stay connected with me by subscribing. I did several tests for video editing performance, from frames to exporting with Final Cut Pro 10.5. The first test was a 10 minute 4K 60 frames per second project editing off of my T7 SSD. While frames generally ran smooth, there eventually was a few drop frames. Exporting was interesting. Here's my format. For RAM, it eventually used all the memory, as expected with 4K exporting. It had to use up to 6.32 gigabytes of swap. As you see here, memory pressure was mostly healthy in green, with a few higher pressures in orange and a couple quick instances in red. The total time of export was 35 minutes. Although I hear this is very good export time for its price, makes me slightly consider the higher 16 gigabyte RAM instead. I know many of us still edit in 1080p. Export test two of three was for a larger 1080p video at 30 frames per second and six minutes long. It's two streams of video with background music and voiceover. This took just seven minutes to export with comfortable memory pressure. My last test was also for 1080p 30 frames per second but for one stream of video and 3.5 minutes long. This export took only two minutes and 32 seconds. Geekbench is an app that tests your processor with the software. It provides a score so you have a number to measure performance. Here are my results for the software it came with, which is macOS 11.0 and the later update 11.0.1. .1. Check out my quick Geekbench video test where I dive into that in more detail. In conclusion, it's a great value for an entry-level product. It makes me anticipate the next higher-end models. While waiting for those, this is an enticing product to start with Apple Silicon now. I've always been all about updating the design in general, but this will satisfy me until then. Also, if you're transitioning into Mac, now is a good time. I hope this helped. If so, give it a like and subscribe for more. Thanks for watching.